Devin, there is no shortage of content marketing agencies and, and content marketing freelancers and, you know, all these things. So if I wanted to outsource content, there's a million places to go. Yet you guys at Animals, in six years, you're now at 100-something people. Uh, so how'd you do it? <laughs> oh, it was easy. We just uh, hashed it out on a napkin over coffee. It was. It took two seconds, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you told me that first three years of the company, uh, the company was, you know, not not too small, but like 18-ish people. And uh, Walter, the founder, was managing the people in the office. And then you joined at that time. And then things started to speed up. So tell me about the first three years of, how animals grew into you know from zero to something, and then yeah, then what happened? Yeah, so Walter founded the company in 2015, and you know he was really good at com- content marketing, right? That's how he grew his previous company, which then got sold. And so you know there, he had a bunch of other startups coming to him saying, "Hey man, how'd you do that?" So thus the agency was formed. And I think in the first couple of years between 2015 and you know the beginning of 2018. Fits and starts. So like grew a little bit. I think he hired a bunch of people and then people let like just trying to figure out what is this agency, how to structure it, how to manage people, had different types of role, roles and kind of figured out a, a sort of basic uh, structure, I guess, that worked. Um, but I think he really ran up against that like 18 to 20 person mark where he just couldn't like getting it bigger than that. Um, he needed help. Uh, Was it a sales issue or something else? Good question. Not a sales issue, uh, though he did hire, I guess 2018 marked the point where um, Walter brought in help to grow sales and grow the company, sort of the team. So Walter did sales in the beginning, very, very good at it. um, And very, because he's very well networked. He had a huge community around him already. So he was doing sales. Then he brought in Jimmy, um, to run sales and grow our marketing so that the company could grow, obviously. Uh, and then that was in January. And then brought in Haley and me, me to run marketing internally. So customer marketing, help with their strategy and all of that. Um, and then Haley to run customer ops. Because those were kind of his two pain points, right? It's like he'd gotten there because he was really good um, at content and he hired some people who were really good at content. Um, but he needed a process around it, right? They were lacking consistency. And so some people have a good experience. Some people have a bad experience. He needed people to come in and like streamline experience and product. Got it. So the problem was then that there was inconsistent quality and, and, uh, uh, hiring more people would require result in more inconsistencies. And so you needed to. Yeah, as you said, streamline it and create processes. Yep. It's a management layer. I mean, we've gone through that at several inflection points since then where like, you know, Haley and I were the management layer, then we quote unquote broke. So then we had to hire another management, you know, and so that happens, that's even happened since we took over. But at the time it was, you know, we needed, he needed people to create process so that they could deliver a consistent product and a consistent customer experience. Mm-hmm. And I knew marketing really well. Haley knew customer ops really well. And so the two of us came together and then we saw, you know, we understood team management as well. So we saw a bunch of opportunities on the team to add, you know, definitions around roles. Like no one really understood what their role was. They didn't know how to get promoted. Um, mm. You know, they, they were feeling kind of low, I think, because they were really excited to be there. Like being around Walter was like very electric. He's so, he knows so much and he cares so much that like people really wanted to be around him. They just got there and like, didn't know what to do. And so they were kind of like, you know, languishing a little bit uh, and needed help. So we kind of like, you know, gave people a direction. We're like, look, here's a vision for the future. Here's, you know, better communication. (laughs) a uh, better process. And then, you know, gradually, I mean, when I got there, I was our editor and our strategist. And of course that doesn't last for very long. Uh, so then we say, okay, we need to hire an editor. Now we have an editing team, right? 
And with each step, we add more process around, okay, you know, how does an editor ensure that everybody delivers a high quality piece? What are our standards? What are our first principles of a high quality piece? Documenting that, sharing that with people in onboarding, creating a team and a process around best principles of editing, best principle, uh, first principles of strategy. Um, and that allows us to really go into every customer, no matter who they are, and say, yeah, we can, we can help you. So the first three years, then the growth was fueled um, a lot by Walter's network and then, then, you know, relationships he had built up. Yep. Then you guys ran into this wall of uh, inconsistency and then you guys brought processes, standardized ways of doing things and focused on quality. Uh, am I getting this right? Yep. Yep. And then, you know, at the same time, Jimmy is you know, growing things at the top of the funnel, right? So he's publishing, we had a blog. I mean, for the first two years, we didn't even have a blog. So, you know, it was all word of mouth. Jimmy introduced a new channel, which also increased, you know, brand awareness. So now sales is starting to increase. Um, so, and that sort of, uh, there was a point in which those two things kind of converged, right? Where like, word of mouth increased and so did like knowledge of our brand. And now they're both kind of fueling each other, if that makes sense. Um, you know, it helps that, you know, we're not trying to scale a software company. So, you know, we're not targeting millions and millions of people. We're targeting B2B SaaS companies and we can only take on so many per year. Um, so I think that mm -hmm. the volume we need is less. So around uh, 2018 then, you set up these processes, but you know the, the the competitive challenge. I would say you know was still there, where there's so many agencies out there. Then how did you make a strategic bet, or like a did you have a particular focus, like hey, we're gonna double down on this thing, and that's how we're gonna win and get bigger and, and so on. It was the product, like it's the equivalent to, you know bringing someone in and saying, all right, this product is broken. Like we need to like think about it from scratch and put it back together again. And that's kind of what we, and our product is a service, right? So it's, you know, uh, quality of the, uh, quality of articles, quality of customer experience, which seems really simple, but think of all the things I just mentioned that go behind that, like having ed dedicated editors, dedicated strategists, um, and like what so is the, the experience of the people buying your agency services? Yeah, yeah, and the process for delivering or creating and delivering that service. Mm. Um, so we we invested heavily in the product, you could say, um, and it it worked, right? Because then now you know if word of you know relying so heavily on word of mouth is great, but also if our product suffers, so does our like a huge growth stream for us. So uh, it was vitally important for us to focus heavily on that. And we, and the thing, the interesting thing is we continue to focus on it. We've evolved our product a lot over the years. Um, we're still delivering articles, but uh, how we do that and how we create them has changed. Um, so I think we, you know, there are certain points like managing a team of 50, for example, our processes were a little different than now at a hundred and we're about to kind of have to change them again because, you know, when you're delivering on a service product, you're always adding people with new, every time you bring on new customers, you have to add more people, right? It's a pe people. Okay. My old boss told me the other day, he's like, Devin, scaling a people business is like the hardest thing that you can do. And I get it because you come up with a perfect process and structure and all that. And then, 50 people later, it's broken again. So you're sort of continuously reinvesting back in the product to make sure it stays good. In, in consulting and in agency business, often you're, you know, you're in the business of expertise, meaning that people need to believe that you're the best. And sounds like you guys double down on quality. And if I now, as just a person in the market, when I think about content marketing and who is the best, you know, animals for me is I would say is number one. I've never used your services. I've, I'm not even reading your blog posts. Somehow I still believe that to be true. So tell me what have you guys done specifically to make me and others believe that you're the best? 
Well, one, we write what we know. So the blog has been a huge, like people, the blog has been a really, like a really good validation for folks who come to us. Like they reference it in sales calls. Um, you know, people like I've gotten on sales calls with, you know, directors or whoever of content marketing departments who are like, they're like excited to talk to us because they've been reading our blog for a while. So, um, I think that like the blog really was a huge, uh, source of validation, um, and can still is, uh, because because we're not writing top of funnel content. We're writing like really deep conceptual stuff about content marketing. Like we're doing the opposite of the HubSpot approach, right? HubSpot's yeah. like, I will teach you the basics. I mean, I learned my job a lot in the early days from HubSpot, right? We're going in the other direction, the kind of expert level, like, you know, sitting in a velvet chair with our cigars talking about uh, content marketing. Um, so I think that was probably the biggest thing. And then also, you know, having strong word of mouth really helps, right? Because this is one of those businesses where, you know, if someone needs a content marketing agency, they're not going to Google it. They're going to ask a friend who they really trust, right? Or even if they do Google it, they're like, how do I choose? All these websites look the same. Like, right. you know, so they're all like, they need a recommendation, so really strong recommendation. And just more of those recommendations floating around, right? If you think about it, B2B SaaS is still somewhat of like a small, very tight, or it feels like a very small industry, right? Mm -hmm. And so like, if there's a name floating around, like it's a small area to float around in. So it kind of elevates it automatically. Besides just writing really in-depth quality content on the blog, Anything else you can think of that you did in terms of marketing to outmarket others on you know <laughs> your competition? You know, it's funny. We really have done so little marketing uh, over the years that it was really, it really. I mean, I launched a Twitter account uh, late 2019 when we did the website redesign. I will say the website redesign really helped. I worked with this like really badass designer and we put something really cool together. And it's like, I will, I did, I will say that like the perception of us was elevated when we launched that new website. Cause it's just, it's really mm. hip. Um, so on the topic of the website, animals.com is somebody else. So yeah, I know. how many I, times have you tried to acquire it? Uh, never. I have to say like, I, <laughs> Our marketing, like for, for being experts in marketing, our marketing of our own company has been terrible. Like we have not done a lot. We just don't like our problem statement is different than a lot of places. So like, I think that's a big, you should take whatever we do with a huge grain of salt, right? We are not trying to get millions of people on a platform. We're trying to, to attract a select number of people of which we know the percentage we need to convert to hit our revenue goal that year. And it's small in comparison to SaaS. So we're just such a bad example. Um, even some other agencies who are just able to do higher volume than us. Uh, so <laughs> I'm like, almost look at one thing we do. Look the way we did not, we intentionally focused on thought leadership on the blog, wrote very deeply about what we know and used and, and, and from perspectives that other people aren't currently taking right? Uh -huh. That is what we did that helped our reputation enormously. Even though we don't get a ton of traffic on our blog, it made the people who follow us really devoted, huge fans and like you think we're hot shit, whether they even know if we are or not. Yeah. So in terms of that content strategy, so was that, did that come about organically or was just, oh, let's just write about what we, what we do? Or was it like, hey, nobody's writing about this stuff. This is our opportunity. Which I think way it's was both. It? It was really both. I mean, I don't know. I wasn't, I don't know the conversations between, between Walter and Jimmy when Jimmy was brought on to do this, but uh, I know that when Jimmy was here, uh, that was his philosophy was like, look, and Walter's too, actually. Um, I think this was really both of them where, you know, they understood that most of what's out there about content marketing is pretty beginner level, right? It's like, yeah. it's not. Right write headlines, yeah. Yep. And so there was, there was a, there was a gap to fill. Um, 
And it was also a philosophy that they just had, which is like, you know, Jimmy is because his, of his proximity to the customer, he was an expert in what our customers were worried about and how that changed over time. And so those two opportunities together, it's like, it's a no brainer. Totally. Um, so you have your content strategy, uh, trying to put your people out there. Cause I, I also see a lot of your people be very active on um, social. Uh, is that a strategic effort or how, organic? How they're just, I mean, that's what happens when you hire a bunch of really passionate marketers, right? Is like, they're going to talk. So no, it's really organic. I mean, certainly, you know, if there's certain things we want to amplify, like we did a, um, we do it on behalf of our customers one. So they, we have a Slack channel where we ask, you know, if they release a big asset or something on behalf of a customer, they'll um, ask the team to amplify. Same with like we did a benchmark report last year. Um, so we'll ask the team to amplify specific things, but no, I mean, the rest of it is just, um, you know, they just, they like to be out there. And, and, you know, I think long-term I will probably make a more concerted effort to leverage that. Um, for me, it's always about where is the need, um, and marketing, uh, the, the company is doing well with the level of marketing we're doing currently. And so it's like, I almost can't handle any more demand. So it's yeah. like, uh, you know, choosing when to use the levers at my disposal. This was something Walter taught Haley and I that I've always really valued is like, you have a certain amount of leverage, but you don't want to use all of that all at once. So for me, it's about being really smart about what I leverage and when based on what the needs are. And if I'm like, okay, well, if the company's kind of like the marketing we're doing is working and the word of mouth is strong and there's a lot of demand generally right now. So some of it is that we're just benefiting from a moment in the world. Um, I don't want to pull my other levers. I want to save those for a rainy day. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, I think that's a strategy too. Like reticence and holding back is also a strategy, but one that people don't always, you know, think about because it doesn't sound that, (laughs) doesn't sound that sexy. Mm -hmm. You said the the so, social being active on social happens when you hire passionate marketers. So is that something that you specifically look for? Like, hey, this guy is you know, or a girl is uh, active on social and vocal about these things. No, absolutely not. And I would say, like, uh, no, definitely not. We have mm-hmm. there are some folks on the team who aren't active on social at all, and they are outstanding. Um, so. And even like, you know, I was catching up with someone. I was talking to someone recently. Now I can't remember who it was. He said, hey, Devin, like I noticed you were really quiet last year. Like right after you and Haley made the announcement, taking over the company, like you got really quiet on social. And it's like, yeah, like I'm not even that loud. I'm not even that loud. Uh, So no, I don't think it's a, it's not a requirement. We certainly do look at folks' social profiles, but we wouldn't rule someone out based on how active they are on social. Um, Because nowadays social is like, I don't know. It's different. It's more personal. It's like, it's more like a way to tell if you're insane or not, you know, than like, Mm. are you a great marketer? So all in all, if we have to just zoom in, then the big strategic bet you made was like, we need to have really, really high standards, high, high quality. And then you you created processes and you're hiring good people and just focusing on the product and list or the marketing and, and, and those things. And this it has worked out really well for you. Yes. Building and community uh, too. Building community right. is building okay. community too. The community aspect is a, like, that was a very key. Uh, now, how do you define community right here? So it's the, you know, the network of startups around us. Right. Um, and the network of marketers, right. Because even the people we don't hire, making sure to nurture those were like making the hiring process really strong and, you know, trying to keep those relationships, even with the people we part with strong, um, you know, those people go places too. We've had people leave animals, go work at places that then hired us. Mm. So mm. the community is, a, it's really nurturing that community and paying att- close attention to it. Um, it works in unscalable ways, right? Like doing unscalable stuff, ended up being the things that helped us scale, right? Think about it. We're focusing on really high quality, built, I guess, process as a scalable thing and building like deep personal relationships. Like those things seem like they don't scale, but in the end, they were the things that 
helped us go from, you know, I think we were doing like a million in ARR when Haley and I joined, albeit, I don't know, 16 this year. Um, writing words seems like a easy thing to copy, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, okay, we can write a better article, says your competitor, and you've also published all your processes. So somebody could technically come and try to do as good quality or better quality content. Is that something you to ever I don't know, think about or worry about? No, because look, publishing a blog post about you know our the principles behind our process is one thing, but you need someone who can execute on those. And so, like you know, we also understand the way to hire the right people to execute on those things. We also have a process behind those items, like you know the way editors work with their writers and then develop OKRs with that writer's manager to help them grow in kind of meta ways that support the editing stuff. So like we invest so much in the people who do, who write those words. Um, and that's hard to replicate. How do you specifically invest? So uh, <laughs> I've invested a lot in people ops this year. Uh, so it goes back to process, right? So we have um, editing team. There's uh OKRs are a huge one, very, very big managers. Um, there's a whole bunch of like, you know, the way our one-on-ones are structured, all, et cetera. Um, you know, subscriptions too. So things like, you know, we have access to newspapers and information and all that stuff. Um, and. So like employee perks of various sorts and support systems. Yeah, education focused stuff. And and we're not even like I would say, oh, and we just this year launched a learning and development department. Um, so that person's gonna be focused on kind of like micro areas in the business. Right now she's focused on onboarding, but soon we're gonna start our own kind of like internal course, as it were, for strategy, for um writing. That's like, you know, everyone's doing these external courses. We're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like we want to do this internally, you know, speaking earlier about training managers, like doing to create a manager training. Um, you can certainly purchase all that stuff, but we find that like applying our principles to something just makes it better and, you know, is e more easily adoptable. Um, so, I mean, that list will continue to grow, I would say. Yeah. As we're looking into the future, you know, I don't know, maybe you can tell me a little bit about specific goals or milestones, business goals that you guys are wanting to hit and maybe, you know, it's three, five, whatever years out, and then what's the strategy to get there? Yep. Uh, the number one thing I'm focused on right now is diversifying our product line. So we have a really strong core product, but scaling that product is, <laughs> as you just heard, a lot of work. And uh, it's, you know, it can be starting to think about growing it at a faster pace can seem a little bit, you know, I don't necessarily know that that's where I want to go. So I'm really looking out into seeing, okay, where, what other things do we want to offer? You know, people occasionally ask us for things like podcasts or video or, you know, it's like, where, where's the opportunity for us? Um, that's really big. The second big thing that I'm focused on is, you know, talent is, Really good talent is consistently hard to find. Um, and, you know, because we've built learning into our process and the way we operate, we're able to bring people on at various levels and then train them up to the level we want, um, but, or we need them to be at. But there's still a top of funnel problem. And so I'm really interested in two things and to solve that problem. One, I'm interested in increasing top of the funnel with higher quality candidates. And two, diversifying uh, the content marketing as an industry because it's very homogenous right now. Like it is, it's very white still. Uh, and I think that's really problematic because we're limiting ourselves as an industry and the quality, like our quality will always be lower if we're this homogenous. And so I'm interested in kind of following a similar path to what uh, the engineering has done where they've created all these like ways for people to become engineers that don't involve going through the higher education system. So there's like boot camps and certifications and all that. You can, you can basically become a rich developer and never go to college. Right. 
Um, so seeing how we can create, like how we can, uh, get, get access to people at the, at the potential stage, like high school or something, find some way to provide an education, train them with a, um, uh, an internship and then bring them into work here. So we're getting people like way early at the point where they're like thinking about their future, putting them through a content man, uh, marketing track and delivering ourselves higher quality candidates. They may not stay with us. Right. But the idea is that we're kind of diversifying and heightening the quality of the content marketing talent pipeline. Awesome. Thanks. I have for no idea up. how I'm going to get there either. <laughs> that was, I am an idea phase for that. I have no zero plan behind that, but that is quality. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And process probably. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you.